to me about this. She runs, she comes in the house. So she comes in frantically running, says, Lito, there's a man out there yelling and threatening us, and I don't know why. I literally jumped out of the chair. It's my granddaughter. Came, uh, I ran running outside, and to my surprise, there, I didn't know what to expect. Yeah. There's not only a man standing here, but he's walking towards me with his hand out. My you know, initial response was, I think I said, sir, uh, please put your hands down. And I immediately asked him, did you threaten these kids? And he immediately said, no, I didn't threaten them. I said, sir, did you threaten these kids? Did you threaten to hit them with the car? And he again said, no, um, I did not threaten the kids. Well, the girl that was filming says, uh, yes, he did. I have it on video. Now, at this point, um, I could recognize that there just something wasn't right about this guy. I asked the girls to go inside for their own safety, but they gave me the video. So I stopped for a second to look at the video and I was shocked. You know, it took me a little while to look at it and he was standing there. I was shocked. I immediately started walking over to him and, uh, and this is an on video. My wife comes outside and says, Tony, don't talk to him. I said, why? I said, at, at my wife said, he's lying. I just saw the video. He did threaten the kids. I asked my, my wife to go back inside and, uh, and, and bear with me. I'm trying to remember this. And uh, he told us that he was coming back around for real. Oh, did he? Yeah, he signaled that he was spinning around. Oh, okay. So um, um, I believe I gave him an opportunity and asked him again. I can't remember. And he, I think he again said, no, I didn't threaten the girls. And at that point I said, you lied to me. You did threaten the girls. They don't deserve this. These are 15 year old girls. You know, why did you do that? And he goes, well, well, well. And, and initially um, I wasn't understanding. I was looking at this guy like, I didn't understand where the rage was coming from. Why is this guy mad and upset and screaming and yelling uh, um, um, when he's talking to two 14, 15 year old girls? And, uh, and I think when I first came out, well, when I looked at the video, I, I've got to be honest, I went back and looked at the video and I noticed that he had parked his car here and then walked, my car's usually parked here, he had walked to where the girls was, so they were more frightened because this guy is walking towards them, he's approaching them. Initially, there were five of them, there were two boys that were driving the carts and uh, my granddaughter and, and uh, two vi their visitors' friends on the back of the cart and they said, as he was pulling up behind them and following them, he put his windshield down and they was reaching into his glove compartment. They don't know why. The boys were so afraid, they left the girls and ran and left. The girls were coming home immediately. And as you can see from the video, he literally didn't even allow them to get to my house. So um, um, at that point in time, I said, you're lying to me. You lied to me. And I think the video goes off after. And I said, you lied to me. And, and I was upset about him lying. And he went on a rage again. And I said, look, I'll talk to the girls about the golf cart, but that doesn't excuse what you did. I said, that had nothing to do with what you did. And he said, well, 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 okay, I'll, I'll apologize. And I said, the apology is too late. And that's what's wrong with this world. People don't think before their actions. They scare people. You address, they told you they were 15 years old. It didn't matter to you. At that point in time, he got belligerent and angry again with me. And then I said, you know what? It's time for you to leave and it's time for you to leave now. I never raised my voice at the guy. That, that's not correct. I need to, I, I went back and looked. I did raise my voice at the guy when I first came out. Yeah. I was frantic. Again, my granddaughter's my life. I was frantic. Uh, but I made it a point to not, uh, you know, uh, touch him. I, I think I composed myself. And I really want to know what happened. Why was this guy so angry? Why are you so angry? And as I tried to talk to him, and he did at one point in sight, and it was, a, it was discontinuous when he said, well, maybe I should apologize. Not I'm going to apologize. Maybe I should. And I did, again, say it's too late because I was thinking about the mistakes that people make, and then they want to apologize. That's how accidents happened. You know, imagine me coming out and being in a rage like this guy and he's on my property and just attacking him. He doesn't know who I am. And unfortunately, the girls told me that even though there were three of them, for whatever reasons, he decided to only approach my daughter. And in the beginning of the video, the first thing he says is, you don't belong here. And then it was later that he says, you don't deserve to be here. 
And it just so happened the other two were friends visiting the night that don't live here in Wellington. And my granddaughter, he had no idea that he was literally standing here at my house. And I don't know if it really hit her when she says, I'm going to go get my, my grandpa. You know, at this point, I'm like, does this guy not realize that she's home? And he didn't. Now, I have to add, when he left, before calling the sheriff's department, I went across the street to talk to, talk to my neighbor who's in the video. And I needed to make sure that prior to my coming out, everything that the kids told me really happened. Yeah. Okay? And not only did it happen, my neighbor, who happens to be a doctor, noticed the guy's rage. And she said, you know, I stayed there because I was afraid for the girls and I wasn't going to leave until someone came out. And she did not leave until she saw me come outside to speak with him. Where do okay. you think this came from? This is part of the, I, I can't be silent. And, uh, you know, I went back and watched the video, excuse me, looked at the video. And um, I can't discount the factor based on what he said and based on who he was concentrating his rage on that um, it was obviously about the fact that he was angry about a golf cart in the community. And the irony of this is while the sheriff's department was here, three of the golf carts came by. I am 100% certain that he has never said anything to anyone else in the golf cart. Uh, the deputy and I talked about it. We do have them in, in Wellington, not just kids, but adults in my neighborhood. And because his rage wasn't at the other two girls whom he assumed lived here, he only walked up to my granddaughter initially and said, you don't belong here. So, you know, during this time, I've tried to try and decipher what people are thinking. You know, we always say you can't jump into someone's mind. You can't jump into someone's heart. Um, my faith is important to me, so I'm always echoing cliches like, but from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So unfortunately, I think he was speaking uh, what may or may not been hidden in his heart. I don't know this guy. None of our neighbors knows this guy. We've never seen him before. It was pointed at my granddaughter, who was the only black person. And um, oh, something that was not caught on camera. As we were talking, he felt the need to tell me I'm 62 years old and I've been in this neighborhood for five years. I said, excuse me, sir, I'm 62 years old and I've lived in Wellington for 33 years. You're preaching to the choir and I have no idea what that has to do with what you just did. You know, quite frankly, this doesn't happen in my community. And you know what? Shame on me for saying that. Shame on me for thinking that because I have learned that there have been uh, incidents. I'm not saying that they are to the magnitude of what's happened here, but they're subtle in nature. And uh, it's, it's one thing to watch it. It's uh, another thing to experience it. And, and I have to be honest, I've watched the video. That, that night I watched it again and again, uh, just to make sure that you know, I wasn't gonna allow my mind to overtake what really happened. That I wasn't gonna allow my emotions uh, to dictate what I say. And uh, unfortunately, I can only come to one conclusion and that this gentleman had a difference with us being different. For what reasons, I don't know. I don't know what this man's experienced in his life. I can tell you this, this man did not know this community, at least in the way that I did not know it, or maybe he does know something I don't know about my community. And even today, I'm asking myself these questions. Had you ever experienced anything like this? Just, ever just, long? just, no, no, not at all, not at all. You know, I, I, I and, and, you know, not for footage, I tell a story. I remember when I moved here in 1987, I'll, I'll never forget, uh, very few homes. I lived in Primrose Park and I walked in the Publix and I'll just never forget this. And, and some of the bad got boys were following me and, uh, you know, younger and much better shape. And I remember them saying, because I went home and told my wife right away, one of the, the bad boys said, oh yeah, I've seen him on TV. He's a football player. 
And that was so disappointing to me. I went home to my wife and I said, you know what? They think the only way we can live in Wellington is if we're an athlete and if we're a professional athlete. This is 1987. We had just moved here and you start to reflect on certain things. And you know, now I'm asking myself, I've been here for 33 years. I've seen transitions and change and growth that most, ha most haven't. And now that I stop and think about certain things, um, I'm asking myself, have I seen opportunities for me to step up? Now, I saw a lot when I was uh, president and chair of the Boys and Girls Club. I was involved with, with you know, youth, primarily uh, um, disadvantaged youth. So I was part of the community. Uh, but what I saw then was uh, that obviously it's not, there, there were underprivileged kids, most black, Hispanic, whatever, uh, that needed the club. But at that time, I also found that the community was willing to help. So. Again, as I find myself trying to, to connect the dots, I have to be honest uh, and say, I did not think we had certain issues that I was watching on television. And I have to be, I would, it would be disingenuous for me to not say, it was more so wishful thinking. And I was just telling myself, oh, these things don't happen behind the gates of Wellington. And I'm, you know, I realize that, um, and as I said to my granddaughter, and the problem today is, uh, my granddaughter doesn't want to talk about it and that's a problem she wants it to just go away and right after it happened one of the mothers came over and we talked about this and and the girls were okay initially talking about it and then as the night went on because they they spent the night as the night went on they were quiet and it really started to bother them and I think they had the chance to think about it and you know the best thing I could tell them is how proud I was of them because they could have responded a certain way. They've been taught that you never disrespect someone. It doesn't matter what they say. And even more so, they've been taught, if you're in a situation like this, just walk away. Just walk away. But I have to come back and say, they were trying to come home. He followed them all the way from our gate, okay? He did not deny threatening to hit them. He had his car right on the edge of the golf cart. So imagine being in a 15 year old child and this happening. Okay, and then uh, I, again, the boys ran, they were afraid or they took off in the golf cart and then he followed the three girls, followed them to my house, parked by my mailbox and then walked towards them. What kind of person does this? What sort of hate and rage does this guy have inside of him? And at this point, that's all that matters. Let me ask you this. If you were to see this man again, what would you say to him? I wouldn't. I, I, I have to be honest here. Um, I'll have a conversation with anyone. But there are certain things that I will never accept. And if you lead by example... Uh, and I've been asked this already, would I have a conversation with him? And my first response was, no, probably not. And I'll tell you why. Because I'm more concerned about having a conversation with my village officials. And I'm more concerned with talking to them about the bigger picture. Okay? And right now, I'm not so sure there needs to be a concentration uh, on calming the black, brown, and minority community. I think we need to spend some time educating everyone else that's not quite understanding what's going on. And then once we educate everyone else, and then once I think people start understanding, uh, I'm, I'm pretty fortunate. You asked me how long I've lived here. I'm not from Florida. I live all over the country. So I've had experiences that a lot of people here haven't had. And, and you know, this is a first. 